Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Stu Clark here. Uh, today is going to be the start of uh, kind of my instructional series for when we're out in the field uh, when we're looking at bird photography and wildlife photography. I probably shoot about 90% birds. Wildlife is something that uh, it's generally a lot harder to get. You got to get a lot luckier with it. The first in the series we're going to be looking at, um, it's going to be a number of videos looking at depth of field and all the different factors that come into play when you're trying to, to get that really nice shallow depth of field. Uh, you know, when you come down to the duck pond, you go down to the estuary here like this, you're always going to see a group of photographers standing, shooting down on their subjects. And you can see one person kind of off to the side with a great big 600 F4 laying down in the muck. Otter just came out. <laughs> and everybody uploads their photos later on. And the person with 600 F4 has always got these beautiful shallow depth of field photos. And all the people standing up assume it's that 600 F4 lens that's allowing them to get that shallow depth of field. Sure, it, can, it definitely helps in a lot of situations, but the reality of it is, it's all about how you approach your subject and how you get angles on the subject. And we're gonna look at all the different factors. So when you're dealing with depth of field, you've got your lens length, your proximity to your subject, how close you are to your subject, how close your subject is to the background, uh, aperture, which is the one that traditionally people think of as how you're going to adjust your depth of field. But for wildlife photography, it's a much, you're still dealing with really narrow depth of field, uh, even as you stop your aperture down. So it plays less of a part. It's more for getting your whole subject in focus as opposed to getting the background in focus as well. It's a bit different with wildlife, especially with the big lens. And finally, sensor size. First thing first, let's talk about lens length. So lens length basically means the, the, the longer your, fo your focal length is, the shallower the depth of field is going to be for any of the given variables. So if you're shooting a 5.6 at 200 mil versus 600 mil, you're gonna have a much larger depth of field at 200 mil versus 600 mil. So the longer your lens is, the more you can, uh, the more you can get kind of get that shallower depth of field. So let's kind of, we'll take kind of get behind the camera here, find a few subjects that we can shoot at the different, the different uh, lens lengths. We can give you an idea of how that impacts uh, your depth of field. Okay, right on. Okay, so starting off, we're going to take some uh, shots here. We've got some nice goals. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a look. We're going to look at 200 mil, 300 mil, 400 mil, and 500 mil, all at 5.6. 200 mil, 300 mil, 400 mil, and 500 mil. So right now we are at let's call it 20 feet. So if we take a look, so, so the depth of field apps are, um, they're a really handy tool, but you just uh, take it with a grain of salt for the actual measurements, I think, especially when you're dealing with, uh, if you're shooting DX, those numbers don't necessarily pan out the way I think they should. Okay, so if you take a look at the app here, so let's get this recording real quick. Make sure we're on an FX body. Okay. We're at about five meters. So at five meters at 200 mil, you're looking at about 20 centimeters is uh, your depth of field. So, but what the depth of field doesn't tell you. So the depth of field might say, uh, this is the part that's actually in focus, but it doesn't tell you how much is kind of in focus and that's one of the problems with it is that uh, the the, the uh, shorter your lens length is it doesn't do as good a job of really blurring out the background uh, you have to get really close to your subject in order to get the, any sort of background blur and that's like I said so that's one of the problems you're looking at the depth of field calculators it's not a hard line of in focus and out of focus uh, so when you're looking at this if you've got a 20 centimeter uh, depth of field it's going to be, you're going to be meters behind it that is still going to have uh, quite a bit of, of uh, uh, detail in it. So you're going to see quite a bit more of the water that's in focus and things like that. 
So now we step this up to 300 millimeters. We're down to 8.86 centimeters. So we've gone from 20 centimeters to eight centimeters. We've less than half by going up from two to 300 millimeters. So it just shows you why 300 millimeters is really your starting point uh, for wildlife photography, because that's gonna be where uh, you can see you're, you're quickly getting to a point where you can start to isolate your subject a lot better. At, four, at 400 millimeters, we're down to 6.15 centimeters. So it's not nearly the jump from two to three as three to four. Uh, so you're still, but at 6.65 centimeters, that goal is mostly going to be in focus. So remember when you're dealing with depth of field from the focal point, you've got half in front, half behind. It's not just uh, behind. It's not your focus point and back. It's There's some forward and some behind it. So that's something to really keep in mind as well. Uh, so a goal is a, probably about six, eight, ten centimeters wide. So at eight point or at 6.15 centimeters, you're going to get a decent depth of field. You'll probably get most of the shoulder in focus as well as a little bit behind it, but you're going to get some better isolation for sure. And once you step up to 500 millimeters, you're down to 3.85 centimeters in focus. You're down to a very, very shallow depth of field. Uh, and also then, uh, I'm closer to my subject essentially with 500 millimeters. Even though I haven't moved, obviously I'm, I'm kind of, I can't get the whole goal in anymore. So you're kind of, you're getting a much, much shallower depth of field with 500 mil. And this is why 500 mil is kind of the, it's uh, it's really the ideal, either 500, 600 mil for bird photography really makes sense because it gives you really shallow depth of field at a distance that's still really workable. Uh, I can actually kind of, uh, this is the distance that I'm not scaring the birds too bad. I can kind of, so it allows you to really kind of give you a good working distance. It's like macro photography. It's like you have a 60 mil macro versus a 105 mil macro. That 60 mil macro is still super sharp. But you have to be so close. It's not going to work for dragonflies and things like that. So your working distance really comes into play when you're picking your focal length. And that's one of the big reasons that uh, you want to have that, um, like I say, 500 mil is kind of your ideal situation when you're dealing with focal lengths. Uh, as a starting point, you know, he said, and that's where a lot of these new super zooms at 150 to 600, they're great because they give you that 150 mil or the 180, the 180, 600 Nikon Z. Uh, what's really nice with that, that the, the uh, 180 side of things, 150 mil side of things, it works great for wildlife. If you're out shooting elk, uh, you're going whale watching in like that. You've got that really, you can back right off and get a much wider shot. So you really works well for those wildlife subjects, but then for birds, you've got the longer side of it, which is where you're going to be 90% of the time. For me, I'm my lens is at 500 mil 95% of the time, but that other 5%, 10% of the time, you really appreciate having that zoom and being able to zoom back. And for me, I don't know why, I don't, I'd struggle to shoot a prime after shooting a zoom for so long because it does give you some real benefits to being able to back off. Uh, the other thing with a lot of these zoom lenses, and uh, we'll be talking about this in the next in the next episode, is that the uh, zoom lenses have got a much, much shorter minimum focus distance versus the prime. Uh, on this lens, it's 2.2 meters. On the 180-600, at 600 mil, it's 2.4 meters, uh, compared to 4.3 meters uh, on a 600 prime. So you've got a, that two meters of, play, of distance that you can play extra. Uh, so if you can get, even though... Uh, the lens might be slower at 6.3 or 6.7, depending on what lens you're using. Uh, you can, because you can get closer to your subjects and you can with the prime, you can effectively get shallower depth of field than you can with the 600 F4 because you can get closer. And that's going to be the next episode. What we're going to talk about is uh, getting close to your subject. And that's going to be the follow-up to this one. Right on. Thanks for watching. Till next time.